Hey, welcome to Rockwood Connects, the educational, informational, and entertaining podcast of the Rockwood School District. I'm Dr. Cassandra Suggs. And I'm Emily Walshaw. And we have another great episode for you today you're not going to want to miss in honor of Black History Month. Emily? Yes. All right. So we're going to jump right in. Our first guest today is Shannon Vaught. So Shannon, Cassandra's told me a lot about you, and she shared that you have kind of a unique background culturally. Would you mind sharing um, about that? Sure. Um, I am Choctaw Native American, and growing up, I was always taught to be very proud of that. I grew up actually in Wichita, Kansas, and actually started my teaching career in Wichita, Kansas, too. And then Kind of later in life, also, my we had a um, my brother came and lived with us when I was in fourth grade, and he is Chinese. So it's just being passionate about all cultures is extremely important to me. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yes, awesome. I appreciate that as well. Now, Rachel, what do you do for the Rockwood School District? And I know you incorporate a lot of different lessons, but why is Black History Month a good time to incorporate some more lessons? Well, I teach at Westridge Elementary, and I teach music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, black history is important because it's American history. Yes. And um, our students, especially elementary students, need to be brought up, K-5, learning every in every grade level, learning bits and pieces along the way and all my colleagues at my school also help with teaching about Black History Month so we're all a big collaborative unit of making sure that Black History is being taught. I love it because it's American history yes. so we're not making it up it's a part of the fabric of America. Absolutely. Love that thank you. Okay, Shannon, so can you share what you do for Rockwood? And then kind of same question, what lessons or what are you teaching your students and how are you sharing about this month with staff? Absolutely. So I teach, I am a resource office. I have a resource office for gifted students at Lafayette. So previously I was also at South and at Summit. Um, so I did teach in the classroom prior. Um, and to me, it's just... Uh, Black History Month. I also do Hispanic Heritage Month. I also do Asian um, Month. I did Native American Month. So to me, it's just celebrating excellence and telling the stories that are often left out of the history books. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, like starting with Black History Month, I mean, the whole reason it started was they went through an eighth grade textbook in the 60s, and at that time, there were only two people of color even mentioned. And there's so many awesome people out there, and to me, it's just celebrating that excellence in, in all different cultures. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, and you do a great job with that, by the way. So, Rachel, now, I know you talked about what you do as a music teacher, but you forgot to say music teacher extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you are. That should be your title. Yeah. Is there a particular black American that you like to teach about in your music classes? Uh, there's so many, uh, particularly for Black History Month, I like to talk about um, African Americans that relate to my kids. So one of them is Trombone Shorty. He started playing the trombone when he was a little, little kid, the <laughs> same ages as my kids. Uh -huh. So when they, I show them, you know, videos of him and we talk about him, that they can play an instrument as young as him and they take strings in third grade and then they uh, go to fourth and fifth grade and then they go to middle school learning instruments so they kind of, they kind of see themselves in him and it's a great story we talk about new orleans because he's from there so i make sure i kind of hit all the different kind of subjects so we talk about different things that he does um he's an activist and stuff like that um, piggybacking onto what Shannon said, our school also does um, all the other celebration months. So Black History Month, we definitely focus in on African Americans, but we definitely do Hispanic Month, just the whole school we do, all the celebrations. So Trauma and Shorty is just one of the many that we talk about in February, but I like to have someone that connects to them. We do Louis Armstrong, he teaches uh, like about scat, and the kids love hearing him sing, so I definitely want to do African-American musicians that they can connect to. I love that. Do you show videos with it as well sometimes? Oh, of course. And like Louis Armstrong, like um, when Saints Go Marching In, oh, yes. some kids will be like, I've heard that song, but they don't know <laughs> it's Louis Armstrong. Yes. And they'll will do What a Wonderful World, and they'll connect that song from a movie that they've seen. Mm -hmm. And so just them making those real world connections and then knowing, oh, that's an African-American. He, you know, and knowing that he plays a trumpet, he sings, he's an actor, he's a comedian. So we just talk about all those things and just, you know, so they can go out in the real world and kind of connect that to 
everybody else. I love that. I love the connections, and I like it when the light bulbs go off in yes. the kids' heads. That's yes. beautiful. Thank yes. you, Rachel. Those are great moments. I yes. love seeing those um. moments happen. <laughs> Um, so Shannon, I know that you've shared some resources, um, and I've been able to read them from Cassandra. What is the response that you get from those resources? And in that, is there one or two individuals that you usually like to spotlight? There's a lot of individuals that I like to spotlight. <laughs> and like Rachel and I connect quite often too, as far as like sharing resources and stuff. This happens like throughout the year a lot. Mm -hmm. We'll like text each other. We like find someone interesting and I'll be like, oh, you need to like in Native American, I was like sending her like some different artists. I was like, you need to check them out. You need to check them out, um, <laughs> music artists. So I think like having that connection too and response mm -hmm. is very different. I mean, I've heard from some teachers um, in the past have said to me like, I don't really feel comfortable teaching about Black History Month, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm not. And I was like, we're just talking about excellence. We're talking about people that influenced American history. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about all of these people that make contributions that maybe you don't know their story. Mm -hmm. So I kind of approach it from, I have some really cool people for you to learn about. And I hope you haven't heard of some of the people that I'm gonna tell you about. Mm -hmm. um, with gifted too, there's been different units where we focused on like some of the inventors from different cultures and some of the things they invented and how that contributed. I feel that knowledge, um, is somewhat lacking in like a lot of areas just because those stories haven't been told really well. I will say, I think there's been a push as of late to do a better job of telling some of those stories, yeah. but there's a lot of really cool people that their stories have, have never been told. So yeah. if I can kind of highlight that, and it's like in some of the different things and, and interesting, like one of my very favorites was like Bass Reeves. And I think when I shared, like you had never heard of Bass no. Reeves before no. <laughs> um, when I shared that, but from like the Wild West, and he was the inspiration for the Lone Ranger. and. Just and if you dive deeper and you look at the ways that he outsmarted the bad guys because he preferred not to shoot, mm. uh -huh. and and just time and time again, it's like my kids kind of eat that stuff up. So yes. so there's just like lots of really cool stories to tell. Yeah, just all about exposure yeah. and yes. getting them hooked. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And you're right. Like every day you think about the the um, street light. Well, that's Gary Morgan. You know who invented that African American. Um, probably every child in this district has seen a street light. They can connect. You know. Penal but there's, it, there's so many resources out there to teach you about all Americans have taught, but these just happen to be black Americans. Yes. And I think kids love that because we're gonna li we live in a world where there's lots of different uh, races and people and we wanna make sure that we're comfortable with each other. Absolutely. So thank you for that, it's beautiful. Now we're back to you, Rachel. <laughs> 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 did you think we forgot about you? <laughs> oh, I love your earrings. Now did Shannon make these earrings? Yes, she made them. Shannon oh. also makes jewelry, folks, that's right. Do you have a website yet? No. We need one. I am, I am a registered Choctaw artist, so I am registered with my tribe, and so I do that through through the tribe. Amazing. We need, to be, we need to be putting you on one of those slides and sending it out yes. to the district, Shannon. I mean, really. So, Rachel, how can teachers incorporate Black History Month, in your opinion, in classrooms? Just being intentional when you are teaching your kids. So when you're talking about math, there's great African-American mathematicians. You know, you're talking about hidden figures and, you know, you're talking about STEM and stuff like that. And you just incorporate the, the African-Americans that have done great things so that you can inspire your kids. Yeah. So if a kid loves reading, you know, there's plenty of authors. And at my school, we are very well-rounded. We do a trivia. So every single day we have a Black History trivia, and it's about every subject. So we were talking about the street light, and and so the kids have to think of like, oh yeah, okay, let me let me try to figure that out. Then they'll um, they'll write the answer down. They're in a raffle. They get a prize if they win. So like the whole school is like constantly learning, and then that's also a good talking point for the classroom teacher. I'm like, okay, who is the first you know African American woman to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, they already know because I. You know, teach about Rita Franklin, and so the whole school, like to get, together, we're learning. So 
Um, I think that classroom teacher, I mean, just, just being intentional with, you know, and I say, pick your favorite subject. You know, if you are passionate about social studies, I have a teacher in my school, she loves social studies. So she picks, you know, talks about African Americans in history and in class. So it's really easy to just, you know, put, you know, those things into the kids' minds because it's all about that light bulb at the end yes. of the day. Because they'll go home and they'll talk about what they learned. Mm -hmm. These kids are like sponges. So mm -hmm. I love teaching elementary school. So it's very, you just be intentional and just, you know, just give a little piece and they'll take, they'll take it and grab onto it. I love it. And you think about it, it's no different than what American culture does anyway. We celebrate the first walk on the moon, right? The fastest car, the first person to break the sound barrier. We, we celebrate first all the time. This just happens to be a first with African Americans in this country. Or sometimes not even a first, but just someone who's doing something great. So I love that. Who was the first minority principal at the secondary level in Rockwood? Does anyone know that question? We're going to answer at the end of the, of the show. Let's see if they know the answer to that question. <laughs> Emily? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to you, Shannon. Um, through all of the research that you've done and all of the learning that you've done, is there one person or one story that has stood out to you or like you've had a wow, true wow moment? There, I know there's probably so many, yeah, but. <laughs> there's, there's tons of them and there's one that like was a new one that I added this year and everything, which I don't know, like I don't think Rachel was familiar either with like Blind Tom. Do you like know his story? Mm, no. So he was, he was a piano prodigy um, during the time of slavery, during emancipation. So his owner, they discovered that he could completely mimic um, anything that was played on the piano. Wow. So he was, he was a prodigy <coughs> that way. So his, his owner at the time kind of took advantage of that, um, became like the guardian took him on tour. Mark Twain actually saw him perform wow. um, several several times and everything and so they do challenges from the audience of like him imitating anything but just like complete piano virtuoso but after emancipation still maintained guardianship he was making his living off of and that, that's one where you're like Ugh, you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff but um just that that excellence was there the excellence was noticed but then it was exploited and so uh. so there's there's some of like those stories and everything too but just seeing seeing to me that's one of like the wow ones and then the other wow one i think that that i recently added was like robert smalls and how mm -hmm. he like stole the, mm -hmm. the stole bus the whole, i mean the, the boat yes. seriously <laughs> yes. like a warship and then yes. and then like helped the north as well because he knew the layouts of, of everything for the south so mm -hmm. i mean there's just so many cool stories that yeah it, yeah. it you can't really go down to just one. yeah <laughs> so and, and to piggyback on something that rachel said too when she was talking about how it inspires kids i have had so many kids that you give them like this little taste and then they come back and they're like did you know and they'll like have these conversations with me just from like this little and they've like dug deep i've had kids do research for like their alarp high school classes on on ones that we've like talked about so it is just like really cool to see them get so interested and, and then run yeah. with things too so yeah yes yes and it's always good to see yourself whether you're a woman and you see a little girl you see a woman doing something you've never done before but i remember i was in high school and on comes this lady on has her own tv show at that time she was sharing a show with rob weller she ended up having her own tv show you all know is oprah and i remember turning on tv going what a black lady in Chicago has her own talk show like that was unheard of. And then, of course, I went into television, right? That, that was so inspiring to me. So it's important to put people in front of us if someone else is blind and could play the piano to see that, like Ray Charles, you know, and give anyone, no matter what color you are, nationality, culture, to see someone doing something you may aspire to do one day is always so encouraging. And we want that for our kids, for sure. Well, and I think even like in our classrooms, my whole thing has always been no matter what you look like when you come into my room, you're going to see someone on the wall that's that right. like you. And I have a very diverse group of kids that I serve, and that's extremely important. Yes, it's it like is. It's, it, it is extremely important that they see those and the things that they will connect with and they'll make comments on just, I mean, different. It's, it's like, I think that, that that should just be kind of like the normal. Right. Because it's like, again, it's just kind of celebrating the excellence that's out there. That's out there, mm -hmm. all the excellence. Yep. Yes. Rachel, I have one more question for you, all right? How <laughs> important is it in teaching music that you teach about all types of artists, cultures, and genres? 
so that when they go into the real world, and that means at home, at the grocery store, at their church, or wherever they are, they can have conversations with other people and connect with them. It's mm -hmm. all about the real world connections. So I'll have parents, one just uh, emailed me last night and said that their daughter was singing Hit the Road Jack by <laughs> the, the mom was like, I know that's from you. Because, you know, I'll play stuff and, and you know, the parents will just be like, where did you learn? Where, where did you learn that from? <laughs> they'll be like, oh, it's, I always tell them, don't say it's from me, but they'll be like, oh, well, Miss Johnson. And the <laughs> next thing I know, you know, they're playing it on their Alexa or whatever um, throughout the house, and the parents will like be like, oh, I remember that song. And just being able to have conversations um, with other people that don't look like you. Westridge is an extremely diverse school, so that's why our celebrations every month are so important. Mm -hmm. And um, like what Shannon said, my room is the same every kid that comes in my room can see themselves in my room and in my teaching yes so um it's so uh, you know kids can talk to each other and we talk about the holidays and like different things like that because there are adults when they become adults and they see someone that doesn't look like them they can be able to relate to them some way somehow yes. or they're out somewhere and they hear a country song and they'll be like, oh, well, I, I know who that is, that's Dolly Parton. And you wouldn't <laughs> think that, you know, that person would even know that, but you gotta be diverse, you gotta be cultured, and it starts at school. I was, like, when I was in school, I didn't learn, it, learn all that stuff at school. My parents had me very diverse. Mm. So I was listening for, for music all over the world, all different genres from the house. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I'm a diverse teacher yes. because I was exposed to all those things as a child. So now mm -hmm. I'm teaching my kids at school what I what I learned, and they, and they pick it up so quickly, mm -hmm. and they just they love every second of it. So um, it's it's important so they can be well-rounded, open-minded human beings. I love that, and you do such a wonderful job. Thank you for that. You know, with music, we have like a timeline in our lives. When we were this mm -hmm. age or that, like music comes on commercials, mm -hmm. and we go, it marks things. It's what, it's so important. It really is. And yeah. the 80s were great, by the, the way. The 80s were awesome. <laughs> yes, we all still love the 80s music. Thank you very much. Michael Jackson, um, what is it, the, be the best selling album of all time? Just saying, that was the 80s. MTV, I yeah, love my yeah, MTV. MTV. Yeah. Michael Jackson made a big splash there, too, you know, when he yeah, came sure on did. and did a music yeah. story, yeah. not just yeah. a video. Just, just yep. so many milestones. Yeah. Emily? So to kind of wrap things up, is there a final message or comment or something you want to sh kind of say just about all these celebrations and yeah. all these holidays? Well, I again, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of something that Rachel said. Um, so like growing up being Choctaw and everything, I, I encountered a lot in elementary school where like people would tell me, no, you're not. Because um, they, <laughs> they like look at me and everything. And I had a fourth grade teacher that like embraced that and she had my dad come in oh. and talk and I still remember that day because we like set up a thing of like some we have like some artifacts and some things and so we set up a table my dad got to talk to the classroom and everything and I was just like beaming and everything and then then all the kids then the kids were like all you know so yeah. I, I think that that just putting it out there and making it just kind of the norm and similar to what Rachel said too I grew up where my parents had tons of friends that didn't look like them we went to their house they came to our house I grew up with tons of friends that didn't necessarily look like me and I went to their house and they came to my house and just I mean the way I wish like everybody could kind of grow up that way too yes. so so yeah. just kind of like celebrating that and just seeing all the awesomeness that is out there in the world and if you keep it too close man you're missing out so, yes so we wouldn't all be like, here yeah. together right yeah. yes yeah. I love it I guess it's time for you to wrap us up Emily all right well <laughs> thank you to all of our viewers and our listeners we had Rachel and Shannon here for a great um, podcast episode so be sure to listen and view on our department webpage YouTube or any podcast platform Thank you so much, and thank you to both of you again Thanks for coming for on. Us. And thank you for tuning in as well. Make sure you check out our next episode. We'll see you soon.